try not to make you fall asleep tonight, um, but I'm not promising anything. So uh, I'm Giacomo Tirabassi, I'm a DevOps engineer, one of those names that say that uh, the speaker to, to, uh, this morning said not to use, but I'm still using it. Uh, you find my contest is GTirabassi, like Git Tirabassi, uh, anyway. I like to automate all the things, cook and uh, git together. It's not a mistake, it's git, uh, like the version control, like, yeah. Um, I work for a company, SIGAP, it's a, a vertically, vertically uh, structured on Kubernetes, so, and uh, CNCF uh, products, so uh, Prometheus, uh, CoreDNS, and all these uh, fancy new tools uh, that uh, there is a big hype on it, and um, when the hype will go down eventually, and probably like in Italy, it's going to take like two, three, five years, um, someone's going to be ready, and I hope it's going to be us. Uh, these are all the contacts. You can find us at the booth uh, if you didn't type it. So why are we here? Um, if there is any any ops in the in the room, uh, old school, uh, I'm going. I'm our core ops. Uh, my objective is to uh, make you out of job in the next uh, ten, five to ten years. This is my goal. Um, I'm pretty hardcore about it, and uh, I'm trying to not like. Uh, make you lose a job just uh, to make you a developer, so to automate your job in a m more efficient way, not to do the same stuff over and over again. So, because human error exists, is a thing, it's not like uh, some words that someone says, is uh, I we make mistake when you say when you do the same task over and over again. At some point, at some times, you're gonna make mistake if it's production traffic on it, uh, that's gonna be bad. So, your company may lose money or you, you may lose a job. We don't want that. And uh, also, application life cycle is boring. Also, because some applications are really legacy, are really boring, and are really bad, written like tens of years ago. And we don't want to do this anymore. Um, I want this. So automate all the things. We talked about a lot about infrastructure automation. So we are at this step. We have all the features, nice features, about uh, infrastructure automation. So if a, if a node dies, there is a, a pool of nodes, so pods were going to be recreated and everything. But what's about uh, our application? If the database dies for a couple minutes, our application is going to die, the front end is going to die, it's going to respond, it's not going to respond, what, what's that? And uh, uh, if our application is not written by us, it's not, we are not the developer, the developer may be dead, or it's another company, or it's uh, very old school, we're gonna, we cannot ask them to change it, so we need to automate that. Um, to explain how we can do this, Kubernetes offers us the tools to do this, so uh, be happy, and, uh, but we need to explain uh, a bit about how Kubernetes allows us to do this uh, automation of the application management. These are a lot of stuff. Some is, uh, I have doubts at this point, uh, less job and more beer for everyone. That's the goal. Um, so, first thing is like how we can um, add stuff, add plugins to Kubernetes to do our stuff, customization, and then we have um, Kubernetes resources. So, how what is the core of a Kubernetes um, object? Uh, what drives Kubernetes automation in itself? And now we can merge th these two things. So, to automate uh, not a part of Kubernetes but a part of our application. Um, Bear with me, I'm gonna, uh, I, I hope it's going to be clear, uh, the, um, the logic path, and uh, I hope you can follow me. Uh, so let's start uh, very fast, uh, Kubernetes extensibility. So what's the plugins ecosystem about around Kubernetes? So we have the two most common known is the container runtime. Right now, everybody most use Docker as a container uh, engine. So if you ask uh, for a pod, the container inside of a pod or the containers inside of the pod are going to be spawned by Docker, uh, container D, and, uh, but there are more engines. So you can use also systemd or you can use cryo, it's a run C enabled uh, uh, container runtime uh, engine. Just You can use whatever things that re um, respect an API. So the API for container runtime is just spawn a containers. Connect uh, the network, connect uh, the volumes, just the basic stuff. Nobody says that it needs to be a container. So there is kubevirt, is a, a, a plugin that respects the query uh, interface, but it spawns virtual machine. 
It's just a container runtime, so what's running, the compute power. And the same thing is, is valid for, in the, for the network. So what's the network? It's connecting stuff together. So making uh, one thing, one container, one virtual whatever, one uh, pod, let's call it. And what we do another, uh, we, we, via network. What, uh, Kubernetes doesn't know, it doesn't want to know what's the network, what's, how does it do, how does it connect the things. Just say, give me some connectivity, how, does it, how do you do this, who cares, there is Calico, there is Canal, there is Weave, there is Cilium, there are many uh, network adapters that use different actual technologies, um, but uh, Kubernetes doesn't care about it. So it defines an interface, if you respect the interface, if your network Plugin respects the interface. It can be also hardware. Who cares? If the network respect the network plugin respects the interface and does its job, so actually connect the things, that's very important. Uh, we're good. Uh, there is a new uh, project um, for the CSI, not the movie, but uh, for volume. Quindi, uh, so uh, container storage interface. So if you have a Ceph Blaster, just respect the interface for connecting volumes together, uh, connecting mounting volumes inside of a container, inside of a virtual machine, inside of a pod, and we're golden. Uh, cloud, so uh, Kubernetes doesn't live in its own like uh, bubble magic, it actually lives on machines. Uh, there is, I mean, serverless is just someone else's server, someone else's machine, so um, if it's AWS, if it's Google Cloud, if it's uh, Azure, if it's your own uh, hardware on premise, uh, you're gonna have services outside of the cluster, and these are controlled uh, by um, somebody they say, okay, give me a load balancer, give me a uh, floating IP, give me a, a, a volume. So if it's uh, instead of the, this is, um, the cloud, uh, you can have just a, one thing that says, okay, I want to create my cloud, my own um, virtual environment. Uh, just say, okay, I define an interface, I respect that, so uh, create load balancer, create floating IP, create endpoint, sorry. Um, something, some uh, interface, and you can extend that. Uh, device plugin, so if you have a special machine, special um, like uh, machine learning, or if you, if you have some special needs, uh, maybe you do some research, some experimental, mathematical research, and you need special uh, processors, you can uh, uh, extend Kubernetes to use the special resources. Uh, maybe you have some nodes that are ju just used for bad jobs, that need uh, uh, TPUs, uh, the new Google fancy TensorFlow processor unit. You can write a plugin, no, there is, it's already written, uh, so all the bad jobs that need uh, a lot of um, machine learning power, you can uh, just um, schedule on those nodes. There is more. So if you want to, right now, if you use the basic uh, secret handling of Kubernetes, it's just uh, the secrets, so your, your AWS uh, key and secret key are just gonna be stored in a base64 encoded, in, in clear text, in clear base64 encoded in your ATCD server. So if, you have, if someone else has access to your ATCD server, it's gonna read your AWS passwords, all your password database, everything is a secret, it's, it's clear text at rest, is. Uh, visible is uh, readable, uh, just base64 dash d and then the text, whatever. Um, so why not use some encryption at rest uh, that Cloud or Vault or Terraform, uh, Ashicorp Vault or some else is, uh, so this is gonna be a plugin. So whatever you have your, um, you just create a secret and then at rest is gonna be encrypted. Uh, you, can, you can write your own scheduler in Kubernetes. So if you don't like what Kubernetes already does, you can complicate your life and say, okay, uh, just at random, uh, if I want to create this pod, no, it doesn't create, don't create this because the name, that I don't like it. Uh, you can add more schedulers, so if you have like very specific uh, rules for allocating pods or scheduling pods, like uh, right now the default um, rules are just distribute the pods. If you want to do very dense allocation, so if you want to use the least amount of, no of nodes um, possible, you just, you just write a custom scheduler so to compress all the pods uh, to respect the, uh, hope, hopefully to respect the requirement of the uh, resources allocated. Um, you can extend the scheduler and then you can, you can create a custom controller. I'm gonna see later what a custom controller is. Um, and then there is API uh, extensive plugin. Uh, all that we talked before was like uh, infrastructure plugins, so things that you can do uh, to work with your pods, with your network, with your um, uh, volumes or secrets. Uh, but 
the way you interact with the Kubernetes is uh, via API. So when you call uh, kubectl apply, it's just the API call, uh, REST API call. Uh, so there is some JSON involved. There is some uh, path involved. We're going to see that. Uh, so you can customize that. Um, uh, the API server, the API server is very good, very good. Uh, crude, uh, create, uh, remove, uh, update, and delete um, API server. It's just that. It's not. It's not magic. It's not fancy. So you can um, customize that too. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that you can do. Kubernetes is just an orchestrator. What you do with it is up to you. There is some defaults that are really good, but then you can customize everything you want. So. What is um, when you say, okay, please Kubernetes, create my pod, create my service, create my um, load balancer or uh, endpoint or uh, secret, what you're doing? Um, this is the basic uh, infrastructure. Um, I need to do this. Sorry, uh, it's late, but I need to explain a bit how it works everything. So uh, then you can say what, uh, how, how does it do this, and how we can make it better. So the API server is just a API call. It's just a response to API. You say, okay, your the resource you try to create. So deployment it respects the spec um, that's written somewhere in the code. It's good. The controller manager says, okay, uh, I have stored a deployment called uh, uh, Pippo. Um, the Pippo says, I, uh, you have to spawn uh, three containers with Nginx, but uh, the API server doesn't do anything, any, any of the stuff. Is the controller manager says, okay, so you have three pod. Uh, from one deployment, you have to create three pod. Uh, this pod needs to have these packs, these ports, these environments. Then the scheduler uh, says, um, and also the controller manager writes those to disk, to the database, and, but it's not doing anything. We don't have, still, we don't have any pods running in our cluster. The scheduler says, okay, this pod is, um, there is three nodes, so the nodes are available, we can schedule those, the first pod in the first node, the second pod in the second node, the third pod in the third node. And then the kubelet does and says, okay, uh, I have a, a pod scheduler on me, this node, and I talk with all the different plugins and actually run, create a container, connect the network, create amount the volumes, all that cool stuff. So, uh, what's the resource? So, we're saying deployment, pod, these are objects, these are just structures, software structures, not uh, some complex uh, infrastructure related stuff. It's just uh, a class with some method. The API server does just as pod. You say, okay, I create a pod, I create a deployment, I create a uh, cron job or a job on ingress. We don't talk the um, infrastructure language, just talking about ideas. It's not still, it's not yet a concrete thing. Uh, we interact with this. This is a human interaction or a machine interaction, but it's still like reasonable by a human. Um, so uh, we need to extend this. Um, these are still the same thing I said. So these objects, uh, they just uh, are identified by for the properties. So there is a happy version. Uh, so uh, these objects vary over time. So one, the first time I create the pod, say, oh, I just need the, doc, the container image name and the environment variable. The second time I iterate on this, oh, uh, probably I need some ports uh, to describe. So the happy version allows us to don't change the name pod and just say, okay, v1, v2, v3, alpha1, alpha2. The kind says pod and deployment and service and everything. Metadata is, allows us to customize without changing the spec. The specs are the most important stuff. Say, okay, uh, we want these kind of images, these kind of pods, ports, environment. Metadata is just names, labels. We identify the various things without actually uh, needing to change the spec. It's, metadata is common to uh, the first three, API version 9 metadata uh, equal to every uh, object. Specs changes uh, based on the API server and the kind. Uh, for uh, deployments, you are going to have some, some data you have to feed, so the number of uh, pods you want. And uh, to service, you have to say, OK, what pod to connect to? It differs, it differs uh, based on the resource you're trying to create. Um, but for the API server, these objects are just like apples and pears. Who cares what they are in like 
concrete stuff. For the API server, it's just really agnostic from the infrastructure. It doesn't know anything. You can say, okay, I want peers, I want apples, and say, okay, if you respect the interface, you're good. If you say, the pe my peers are uh, namespaced, then you're golden. Golden, like the apple, yeah. Um, so this is the actual like, API structure. Uh, there is a, the master URL, so you have to actually call a server. And then you say, okay, what group of APIs, because uh, Apple and, um, Apple and uh, Peers are fruits, so we call this the, gr the fruits uh, group of API, and then we maybe want vegetables and meat and protein. Uh, the version, uh, there is a, a rule like V1 is stable, V1 beta is stable, but for short-lived cluster. So if you have a cluster that lives for probably like a week, two weeks, uh, you can use beta. Uh, this is the official documentation, it's not like uh, proven. The alpha version of the APIs is disabled by default in your clusters, if you just run it. Um, it's development uh, style API. Uh, uh, so some resources are, are namespaced, like uh, deployment pods uh, services. Some are not, like nodes, you cannot namespace uh, a node because all the nodes are in your cluster in the same way. And then there is the kind, this is the last part. And then there, this pack you feed with uh, JSON when you call curl and then some, uh, some data on it. Um, so the uh, customer resource definition says, okay, I want to create my apples. In my, in my Kubernetes, I want the Kubernetes uh, API server to respond and say, you can create apples and peers, really. I'm not kidding. Um, but what they are, um, they are just the, in the same thing. So uh, they went stable, this is the, the way you, can, you are allowed to create your peers without recompiling the source code. You just say, please allow me to create apples and peers in your in, uh, in database. Uh, so the same the apply to all the other objects. So deployment and services, you can do this uh, with the same um, properties that Kubernetes offers. So RBAC, uh, all the authorization, authentication, the cool features, uh, and the versioning, and the Kubelet, uh, then there is a, a demo about this. Uh, I hope uh, it uh, works. So um, I have a mini cube. Uh, this is a recording. Uh, probably some bigger. Uh, so in the cluster I show I have nothing. Uh, sorry, I make it started so it's uh, it's a bit more. Uh, um, this, uh, uh, I hope it's gonna be. So we're trying to create our apples. I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't kidding. Um, so there is no custom resource definition. This is the short time for. for it. I'm applying a custom resource definition actually. So I'm uh, actually adding the object uh, apples, peers, and berries. Right now there is all the API um, uh, API services. So, so the groups of API that uh, in, I installed in the cluster. Uh, at the, the one, so it's still is here. So it's in the alpha version, and it's uh, um, installed, uh, and I can access it with the kubectl. I, KL is the shorthand for kubectl, just for it. I mean, and uh, I'm not using some special command line, uh, something I wrote. And uh, I also create three kind of apples. Uh, these, these are just in database. I'm not in doing anything with it. It's not infrastructure related. I'm using Kubernetes, but it's not infrastructure related. So this is pretty cool for creating your own resources. So instead of Apple and Peers, you may say, okay, let's give me, uh, please Kubernetes, give me a Magento. Please give me a WordPress, not Apple and Peers actually. But to see how uh, this is uh, just uh, objects, like when you say describe something, it's not, it's not in magic, it's just uh, the power of API. Uh, I mean, if you do this like in production, like create apples and peers in production with the API server, just please call me, because I give you the idea, so I want credit for it. Um, please don't. Um, don't mention my name. Uh, okay, but this is useless, because we have objects in the cluster that are saved, but we're not doing anything with it. So how we can act when we try to create, when, when uh, we order the Kubernetes to say, okay, create my apples and peers uh, here. And now my uh, group version, so it's the same structure as before, just with my own uh, object. Controllers, so we have these objects, really cool, 
really fine and uh, the same uh, the same structure but now we focus on the controller manager the controller manager is like every other manager doesn't do any work at all uh, just stays there and, and check that everybody does his work so the pod controllers um, actually does the work for the pod. The listen for some pod creation orders and says, okay, I have to create some pods. The deployment of uh, controllers say, oh, I received an order to create some deployment and I create them. Uh, the controller, oh, the con and then there is the cloud manager controller that actually, actually, it just needs to call API on the cloud engine. So it's allowed to do this, even if it's work, I know it's hard, but they allowed it. So what is a controller? Uh, a controller is a reconciliation loop. So there is an input that says, OK, let's create um, a deployment. And then there is a, a, a listener for the infrastructure. So if this object I want to create already exists, please don't do anything. If it doesn't, please create. It's the one that does all the, all the dirty work. So um, there is a, a cycle, observe, analyze, uh, observe the interaction from the input analyze the state of the infrastructure, and then act on it based on the, the, what's the difference. Uh, desired state, uh, real state, please meet. Um, so it's uh, attached, the technicality is uh, how a controller um, comes from the, the controller listens uh, from the creation of the object. You can find it's, more, it's a, a feature not from the Kubernetes itself, but from CoreOS etcd. Uh, database, so it's not a core feature of Kubernetes, but it's used so to be efficient. Uh, for the listening of new creation of, of pods is a very common because many controllers need to do okay. Let's pre let's please when a new pod is created, there are many controllers that listen to it and say okay if this is good, okay if this is that, and then all of this stuff. So we cannot just um, have this uh, in a normal cluster. There are uh, usually 80 controllers running. So AT controller that listen to object creation and deletion and update and to act based on this information, these triggers. So if the of or if these um, all 80 uh, controllers just ping and pull uh, from the API server, just ask for new events, this gonna the API server gonna die. Uh, so there is a, a push method uh, um, of update. Um, the controllers are cluster aware, so if there is a node, a node dying in the cluster, the controllers are going to be noticed. Uh, they just, it's, like, it's just a queue. So if uh, a controller, when it starts, says, OK, to ask the controller manager, because it controls everything, uh, please uh, give me the events for this object. If uh, I ask only for the pod, I already received the message for the push events for the pod. If I ask for node, pod, uh, apples and peers are going to be uh, um, made aware uh, of those objects creation, deletion and update. For, for the, uh, if we need to write a controller, we just need to implement these three functions, add, update and delete. So on, add, on, update, on, on, delete. So um, when you write, uh, when a controller is already written, we have these properties. So a fully typed, so there is no uh, uh, curl style. Uh, we have to slash stuff uh, when you use Go. All the controllers right now are written in Go, like the rest of Kubernetes. Uh, there is cache and work use. These are the same thing uh, in reverse order. So when um, an object is in a large cluster, there are many objects that are being created and deleted and updated at the same time. So uh, the controller cannot die and to doing the, trying to do this and trying to controlling everything. So there is a cache, uh, so there is a queue of incoming jobs from the controller and there is a queue of outgoing uh, commands for the API server. So when uh, the controller ne needs to act on uh, information, needs to call the API server, say, so the deployment uh, controller, when he received a, a deployment, needs to create a resource, um, a replica set, a new replica set. So if I have uh, 10,000 deployments created at the same time, the controller needs to uh, pace itself calling the API server creating the, the replica set, cannot uh, calling uh, and taking down the server. Uh, there is a, a chaos, this is all done by, cli by client libraries. So there is a chaos uh, um, uh, library, leader election. So I can have a controller, is a, just a process. It's nothing new, nothing, uh, it's a Go program that runs. 
So uh, if I want to do a controller in um, high availability, how would I do this? I cannot have two controllers managing the same resources. I need to do redirection. So I have two processes that task the API server who, who is in charge making decisions. If there is one, then good. And then uh, there is, uh, if he dies, there is the other uh, for doing the job. So we have high availability on the controller side. There is code generation and client set is not. Um, so this is a custom controller, just custom controllers on the resources already in the cluster. So we can do many, many things. Automation, you think our automation, do whatever you want. Um, every time we, someone creates a namespace, we can listen and say, okay, give me a Jira ticket, or create me a Slack alert, or create me, um, we can, so if, for every service, so exposing um, traffic to, from the internet, it's kind of dangerous and it's not maybe allowed from everybody, but we want our developer to just learn stuff. So we allow them, we let them create services, but just advise, uh, send an email, send a ticket, send a notification to the sysadmin to check if the developer work is good or safe or something, or, or maybe run a job to check if the, what, they, what they did is uh, actually good. There's many, many ideas on resources already in the cluster. So infrastructure resources, we can do this. Checking more automation out of this. Um, so uh, now we have all this information that apparently is worth nothing, but if we put them together, um, we can say, okay, create an apple based on the events um, that I get from the creation and deletion of data of this Apple, create some resources, actual like infrastructure resources. So if, instead of the Apple, I create a, I say, okay, create me a WordPress cluster, or a Magento cluster, or a ATCD cluster. The uh, controller for this resource is gonna say, okay, let's just tell me the, the version of my SQL, the version of my WordPress, and I create everything else. This is probably the size of the cluster, and I, know how to create, I create the pod, I create their services, I create the deployments, I create the secrets, config maps, everything for you, because I'm an operator. Uh, so operators are just a CRD, so custom resource definition, so I want to create my own resource, not just deployment services, the one available from the, custom, from the Kubernetes, the installation, and I create a custom controller, so some magic, some work, uh, for managing that resource. So if I, uh, there are many also, this is just pattern. You can, there is no mention of an operator in the Kubernetes documentation, the official documentation. It's just a pattern of uh, combining a CRD and a controller. There is nothing, uh, it's like a container, it's not actually a Linux feature. It's like putting together stuff that already exists and then you create a container. Uh, it's, it was created by ColorOS team. Uh, it's uh, more like a year and a half ago. It's not very like everything in Kubernetes is really new. So uh, there is nothing like experience, years of experience on it. If, if someone like asking the um, job description to be uh, like proficient in uh, operators for like 10 years, so it just is not possible. Um, and this is just a combination of two things. It's nothing, uh, and it's a Go program, uh, most likely. Uh, there are some SDK that are uh, pretty good right now, but still not all those features, so the caching, the work use, the leader election, or the chaos engineering client side is just implemented in the Go, Golang client uh, for Kubernetes. There are a lot of ready uh, available. So there is uh, most operators, as uh, we see, are uh, operation uh, made as code. So we have infrastructure as code, and then we have operation as code. So all the stuff that uh, and operation are mainly like we knew how to automate stateless application already. We didn't have this to do this talk, but to automate stateful application, that's really hard. So we need to do maybe spawn the first uh, container of the um, ATCD to bootstrap the cluster and then add some more. So this knowledge we cannot use with the already uh, already available tools. We need to create our own. Maybe we have an old legacy application and we need to uh, deliver to uh, to the cloud native because the, our boss says okay everything is, needs to be cloud native. So the first line is just databases, and then we have uh, Vitesse and Redis. Still databases is like, uh, Vitesse is a really new project that's auto-sharding out of YouTube, so very good. Rook is a 
orchestrator for uh, Chaff, uh, the file system. It's not the uh, thing. Uh, Chaff manages a project for managing uh, um, Let's Encrypt certificates. Uh, so um, instead of just having a program that does this itself, say, okay, I want an operator, just tell me the domain name, and I create the certificate. Uh, because I cannot create many, many certificates because of the API that blocks me, and then I'm without, I cannot serve traffic without the certificate, and then all the bad things happen. And then we can have also many more, um, we can create our own. There are, um, uh, if I want to create like uh, automation, if I want to contribute to Kubernetes, there is a very lengthy process to add some ideas to Kubernetes. The Kubernetes community is very large, so to just add one piece is very hard. So if I want to experiment to do, to, like if I want to do snapshots, it's just like I've, I have persistent volumes, I just want to say, okay, to the cloud, to the Google Cloud, say this volume, make, take a snapshot. Uh, there is no object right now. If I want to contribute, if I want to add this feature, I just need to have a formal, like uh, uh, in the community is really hard, it's gonna take a little, uh, like many months. If I just want to do it, create a customer source called snapshot and dot API and all the like how many times uh, and then just works just you have to implement it and call the API for creating the snapshot uh, so why because application legacy application are really hard to manage is not uh, there are many people that lost their lives doing the same thing over 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 and over again I don't want to do this I just want to do to like recreate my job more and more uh, times so Okay, I lost something. Okay, no. Why? Okay, look here. Um, okay. So things are hard, things are repetitive. We don't want to do this. We want just to write some code. Take it in production and just doing the code, the repetitive stuff. We are doing the drinking beer and having fun stuff. It's hard. It's not going to be easy because it's, it's just the same problems that are hard for us. It's going to be hard for the code. It's not like magic. But we try to wait to optimize. So we fix one problem, then the production side is going to be is going to go down at some point. It always does. But we fix in uh, the code and then everybody's like. Uh, less and less uh, over time, less waking up, less getting angry, less getting fired, and all this stuff. Uh, we don't want to reinvent the wheel all the times, so we reinvented everything many times, too many times for my, for my taste. So uh, we want to use all the features that Kubernetes offers us, gives us, and um, so availability, authorization events, uh, reconciliation loop. We don't want to re rewrite all this code, it's a lot of code, uh, nobody can, I mean, I trust Google more than my code, um, so I like to have all these features built in in my program, because I can. No, nobody uh, says I cannot write code to manage application. I can do it without Kubernetes, but I have to do all this stuff, and I don't want to. Um, then, uh, okay. So there are alternatives um, for doing less stuff with the less effort, because writing operators means writing Go code. No, but uh, like not all the people can write Go code or not want to. They, it's it's a lengthy process. It's not very fast. So um, the basic like if I want to deploy my WordPress, my stateful application is just writing a manifest. It's going to take care of some stuff, uh, not all the things. So maybe I, I need to do, go into the exactly into the pod and the container and do some scripting, and then when the site go down, the scripting is gone, and then over and over again. And chart is very good for updating. So if I have an application that only have troubles when I have to update it, and but when the probably uh, one pod goes down and then comes up again, there is no problem with the, with the reconciliation of the cluster. If the problem is only uh, updating the application, uh, probably Helm, you can take a look at it, is a package manager for Kubernetes. They sell it like this. Um, there is third party automation, but you have to reinvent the wheel. Please don't. And then there is operator that you have, you can, uh, all these features from Kubernetes. I said Kubernetes too many times, but uh, that's it. Um, but there are some problems with it. It's not uh, all like happy. Uh, I don't know the time. Uh, Okay, I still have some very small time. 
then there is a demo if you um, so not uh, everything comes at a price so um, to, to write this operator we need to bring together peoples I, I, I bring the first two problems I think are the hardest because uh, technical problems they can all be solved you just put some people doing this stuff uh, maybe it takes an hour maybe it takes a week but it can always be solved people problems it's not the same thing so uh, so there are a lot of people still not convinced about automation they say oh, automation is the evil terminator all the stuff um, but these people are used to manage computers so it's uh, they know what they can do what they can't and uh, it's pretty troubling so we need to put together in a team in a in a room a go developer a kubernetes something someone that knows about kubernetes and then someone that knows about this legacy app or this uh, stateful application so bringing these three um, capabi uh, capabilities is not always easy uh, most likely the first two are combined go and kubernetes maybe go together but uh, bring in the same room also someone that knows about the application and is willing to tell you about it and to tell you the shortcomings. Sometimes applications just need to be restarted for no reason at all. Just restart the machine. That's one thing I've heard many, many times. And uh, maybe they, want, they don't want to tell you all the secrets. So this is a problem. Uh, and also people exactly to trust automation. So co I trust code. I don't trust my code as much, but I trust generally code. And... Um, more than my shell skills. So it's, uh, um, this is the, the idea. So um, the recap is uh, operations are expensive. Uh, we don't always see this as a, but manual uh, peoples are more expensive than machines. Uh, this is a fact, it's not, I'm not telling you something I just learned. Uh, manual operations are boring. I don't want to do, I want my job to be exciting and to solve new problems all the, all the times. I'm still young, so... Um, and then also people make mistakes. Uh, we, don't want, we, don't want, we want to abstract everything, like we have abstracted uh, uh, infrastructure uh, with Kubernetes, with containers, with uh, all these kind of tools. Very happy now, but uh, sometimes we're going to be more aware of what um, the true benefits of it. Uh, we want to abstract also uh, application lifecycle uh, for stateless for new application that is going to be written in the next years and uh, it's going to be easy because or people already know about microservices. Some people already know about microservices or stateless appli stateless application stateful. Uh, we're probably going to be using some distributed database that's going to be easier for the ops team. Uh, but people are not. I mean, the old application are going to be still going to be there. Uh, the infrastructure changes, so the application life cycle. Uh, stateful is, is going to be always hard because data is heavy, data is slow, data is uh, very delicate to manage, but it's not blocking. Uh, it's not like blocking our evolution to be more agile, more not agile in the, the agile uh, way of like sprints and epics and just more speed, more... Um, I want to, to have people that think about, oh, I, today I'm going to put in production my application. I don't want to cry about it. I, I just want them to be happy, to have new features, not more problems. Um, so this is the, the idea behind it. I hope you like it. Um, there is a demo for, uh, yeah, this is a... Uh, so there is some, if you want to do this, actually, uh, there are projects all open source, so uh, as is, if it breaks, it's not their fault, it's your fault. Uh, probably it's going to be their fault, but they don't want to tell you. I have a small demo to uh, tell you, like, uh, this is a simple, very simple controllers for just pods. So this is a controller to, uh, is like uh, 100 lines of, co of Go code. Uh, sorry? Uh, I started like r um, reading up. Uh, so the writing a new operator uh, or controller is the same thing because it's just an operator, is a controller, and the first thing the init function is just uh, creating a custom resource. So calling the API and creating a custom resource. I started from looking at the. Um, 
uh, ATCD operator and the uh, Prometheus operator because those are the ones created by CoreOS. The, uh, they, they invented these things, so always good to look at this uh, new uh, feature and also, uh, but these, these are the new ideas, so uh, operator kit, um, these are libraries that help you writing less code and to be more uh, efficient uh, because there is a lot of bootstrapping like everything. Kubernetes is, uh, there is a lot of stuff. So we want to do all these features. So the caching, the work use, the election, these are just, uh, I mean, you can have this feature. It's not like, uh, please do this. It's just you have to write code to say, okay, enable this, enable this, enable this. And then you can use Cooper, include the library and just uh, writing your uh, on add, on delete, on update functions, say uh, doing less less code and more business logic. This is our idea. So we removed a lot of business of uh, code logic uh, by using Kubernetes. So don't add more uh, code logic uh, by trying to do all the things by yourself in the co operator code. Just this is a idea. This is just uh, uh, 100 lines of code to watch for new pod creation. Uh, so I'm listening for the pod event. There is a, a new pod controller definition, and then there is the main. It say okay, informers, um, shared informers because pods are uh, a resource that many many controller listens. So we use a shared so we don't overload the API server. And then I say okay, use this resource. Uh, this everything is typed. So there is no uh, slash pod, slash v1, slash anything. Just use the structs. Uh, using the client go library is very hard. It's not like you, there is no documentation about like where this, uh, like just look at these imports. It's like very, very bad. This, there is no, no sense at all. Like I cannot make sense of this, like why they should be there. But there are, so um, I don't know, work with it. I don't care. Sorry? No, you cannot import the root package and then subsequent package like in Java. You have 45 imports. So yeah. Import I mean, it's good for like uh, verbosity. I like to know what I'm importing, but uh, they uh, split some things like why like the cache feature is like in, under the tools and the work use is under the util. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know why, but it's there. We don't mess around with it. Um, so. Uh, so this is my custom controller, uh, listening for pods events. And then uh, uh, here, I don't want to, and then make a second test. So I'm just deploying stuff. This is very fast. I'm listening for pod updates. Now I'm pending uh, some uh, ideas. These are the images. I'm just listening the images. And then I have the pod running. I'm running some three pods. This is the name page. No, this is the deployment name. So I'm running. Uh, one deployment called testing and one deployment called staging. Um, get deploy. Uh, and this is the creation of it. Uh, this is just very, very basic. This is just 200 lines of code and then I'm watching for, for pod creation on my cluster, cluster wide. So oh, if I want to send notification, I'm just logging because it's the easiest thing to do, but I can act on it. Um, my my on add on update on delete is just logging. This is my implementation. Um, I have another one. The, I created the Magento operator. This still doesn't deploy Magento actually, but it deploys stuff. Uh, uh, make third. This is uh, running the Magento operator. Uh, this is a bit of more of a 200. So it's looking for Magento resources creation. Um, I'm going to show you only like what I'm actually deploying right now. Uh, example. So um, this is the manifest I'm trying to create. So it has the API version, uh, the kind. I can have whatever. Metadata is like the same thing. So when I I, I can interact with. So I create my cluster with uh, some app name uh, Frutta. Um, so I. Uh, I can manage all this with my operator. Uh, this is good, but if I want to other resources, so external, uh, I want to cu have custom um, 
services deployment, whatever, to say, okay, uh, group of this, uh, I can use these labels like every other resources. There is no magic underneath this. And then all the, the only the parameters I want is like the size of the Magento deployment and the version of Magento, and then if I want the um, high availability or not. And then the Magento operator, like any good person that says that I'm gonna receive a call or open a ticket on Jira, uh, it's gonna do its job. Uh, I don't remember like what uh, oh, um, apply chef example. So um, my um, I have some resources created uh, deployment. Uh, so every Magento deployment needs a varnish in front of it and an Apache with the PHP FPM. Um, get uh, deploy, uh, there is the, all the things. Uh, the staging uh, is the one from before. Um, and then uh, get all. So I have the, uh, the services created too. Uh, this is a very basic implementation. I just created uh, two services and two deployments. Um, but you can do whatever you want with your application, config maps, secrets, all the things that your application specific needs, you can do with this uh, automation. Yes? Would you add a controller as a container in the... Yeah, uh, this, the usual way to deploy your controllers is inside of the cluster as a, like, as a deployment. You don't need a service because there is no traffic incoming inside of the... You just need to be able to... Um, probably you're gonna uh, taint this uh, deployment to be running in the masters just for like... Uh, more uh, close to the API server, uh, but the, the 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 usual way to deploy this is a go go binary. Um, so you package it in a container, deploy with the, like uh, size of three or four or whatever, based on the size of your uh, cluster, and then deploying inside the cluster. So it's managing itself. Nice inception. This is uh, I'm done. Uh, if you have. Uh, Question: If I'm not, if I have not been clear on uh, something, please uh, ask. I'm not very uh, young, so uh, I don't have a lot of experience uh, with talks. Uh, if I have something that uh, you wish to explore, my my idea of the talk is to make you go home and search about this stuff and say, okay, I can propose this to my boss and say, so I can have some free time and drinking more beer. And so this uh, this is the purpose of this talk, not to teach you anything because. There is nothing, actually, uh, you go home with the same ideas you have before. They'll say there is some options. You're not stuck with your repetitive jobs uh, for the rest of your life. That's it. Thank you very much.